what's going on what's going on you know sometimes you got to empty the trash of your life in order to have a better life and that's what this video is going to be about right now um, I just wrote a oh wow I had an inspiration last night and the inspiration and I've had a similar types of inspiration and thoughts um, throughout my struggle and the inspiration was just to have like a set time of like okay take this time in order to change your life right could be 30 days it could be um, 60 days it could be 90 days it could be until your birthday um, but set like a goal and a time frame for you to change your life you know and um, so I had an inspiration last night to go 365 days, all right? So, um, and because my life is in drastic need of a change. My life is in drastic need of a radical change. Um, my life is in danger. Uh, my long-term life is in danger. Um, my spiritual, emotional, and physical health is in danger. Um, my uh, my legacy is in danger. Um, a lot of things are in danger. and They've been in danger for a long time. Um, and I can't say that I'm finally going to do something about it to change that. I'm not going to say... I can't say that because I've been trying my best. Um, I've been dealt a very bad hand you can say but been put in a very bad situation um, and the reason why I want you to listen to this video of course because I believe that I have a lot of wisdom and knowledge things to do and things not to do um, if you're in a hole it's hard to get out of that hole without help about knowledge, about wisdom. Um, and so I'm going to share my journey with you because I know there's a lot of other people who are, who are going through the same thing that I'm going through, um, but also who may be there one day. And you're going to need this type of mindset to get you through those times, those very, very tough times. In this day and age, um, especially good people are going through a lot of bad things. And I'm one of those people. Um, I've made my share of mistakes and things of that nature. Um, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book right now about my life because I felt compelled to do so. Um, by a lot of events in my life and... Um, a lot of people who are who are very close to me, who are very close to me in proximity, but also um, by where God placed them in my life. Um, a lot of relationships and institutions breaking down around me that should have been there to support me, right? Um, and so I'm calling this the 365 day new life challenge. Um, it's a challenge to myself first. Um, and you can take on this challenge if, if you would like as well. If, if you're watching this video or you want to pass this video to someone else, you know, that's awesome. You know, um, but um, and this 365 day new life challenge um, is just to change my situation. That's the focus. That's the um, that's the goal is to change my life and my son's life. He's 10 years old. Awesome kid. You know, um, and so every single bad thing every single obstacle every single negative thing that has been in my life over the next over the past year um i just moved to raleigh north carolina in july early july of last year i moved to raleigh north carolina beautiful place from grand rapids michigan also a beautiful place i like raleigh a lot better i'm an east coast kid so um but I do like Raleigh a lot better than I do than I did Grand Rapids, 
Um, I'm originally from Norfolk, Virginia. Go VA, what's up? Southeast Virginia. Um, but yeah, so um, that's, that's, just, that's just a little taste of my story. Um, but I got here in early July, y'all. Wow, I can't, I really can't believe that it's been a year, but it definitely has been a year. It's, it's not that it, it has gone that quickly. It's just that all the things that have occurred over the last year, and I'm still in the same place, really. I'm really still in the same place. I'm, you might can say that I'm in a little bit of better, a better place in certain ways, but in certain ways you can say that I'm, 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 in, I'm in the same place and not in a better place, you know, in a worse position, you know, than I was last year when I got here. And that's what this 365 day challenge is all about because I'm tired of being in the same place. It doesn't matter if you're in a better position or a worse position. If you're in the same place for the past year and you tried your best, that's very tough. It's very tough. It's very difficult. And that's what um, I, I'm, I'm doing this challenge for. You're going to have to take action in your life in order. You're going to have to take action, radical action. You're going to have to do something different that you, that you haven't been doing before. You're gonna, um, if, if you're going to do the same thing, then the intensity has to be ratchet it up you know so I'm going to be doing some of the same things with more intense focus determination uh, planning organization um, and um, more zeal to what I'm doing as well um, but also I'm going to change some things so I'm going to be letting out a lot of wisdom right now you probably want to be writing some of this stuff down um, because I think what I just said right there is very, very powerful. You know, if you want to get out of that hole that you're in, my, my God, you're going to have to do that. Um, I'm just sitting in my car right now, um, outside of a venue waiting for someone right now. But, um, this is a, this is a nice place to be right now, um, to talk, to talk to you about this because technically I'm, I'm, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I am homeless right now. Um, I live in a hotel with my wife and child and son. Um, and again, I'm writing a book about my life um, and all the details about what happened over the last year is going to be in there. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, when when I say that, um, and, I, and I'm not sure if I even said it so far, but I shouldn't be here, y'all. I should not be in the position that I'm in right now, but I am. So... Before you judge me, read my book. I'm going to give you a little overview of some things right now. But before you judge me, read my book. Okay, I've, I've been through a lot. Um, I, sh I really shouldn't be here right now. I really shouldn't be on earth right now. But God pulled me through a lot of things. I should have been on the news. The people around me should have been on the news with me. But it didn't happen. Thank God. You know, um, because of God. God pulled me through okay um, and I believe that in a year God is going to bless me so much he's going to pull me through and things are going to be so different because I I cannot live another year like the past year that I just lived I can't do that anymore God puts us on earth he gives us a certain amount of time and what I refuse to do is go through a year like I just went through. Okay. And um, that's my goal. Okay. That's my goal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to accomplish my goal. Um, This is a big thing right here. What, 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 I'm, what I'm about to say. I'm not going to talk. My, in, the, in the next year, I'm not going to focus on my distractions. I'm going to focus on my goal. That's huge because let's just say that you're on a journey. Let's say that you're driving in your car and you're trying to get to work, you're trying to get to work, trying to get to church. You're trying to get to an entertainment event. You have a, you have somewhere to go, right? And let's say that there's someone who pulls in front of you on the highway, pulls in front of you on the street or something like that, you know? And you find yourself talking back to that person or maybe 
directly talking to that person saying hey what are you doing or whatever whatever you know you're getting all angry and upset or maybe you're just you know just in your car and you're talking back to that person or whatever it is you know of course it's called road rage you get that road rage you get that you know that adrenaline rush and you're angry and you're upset because this person really puts your life in danger i mean if someone cuts you off on the highway or on the road they're really putting your life your well-being in danger i don't know if you're if you're a girlfriend or boyfriend or spouse or your children are in the car your dog or, or just you you know it doesn't matter they put your life in danger other people's life in danger you know by doing something very ignorant very stupid very wrong on your journey you 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 know you're trying to get somewhere um, they, you know, they, you know, they could be driving slow, really slow in front of you, um, holding up traffic, making you miss a light and you're, and you're on a time schedule. You're trying to get somewhere, right? That can be all very frustrating. Um, they could do a whole lot of different things on the road. You know what I'm talking about. I don't have to go any further, do I? Okay. And we hate those types of things because we think that we're the best drivers ever, right? <laughs> but, but let's just say that we are pretty great drivers. Okay. We respect other people on the road. Um, you know, uh, we're not out here trying to be the fastest person on the road or trying to be dangerous or anything like that. And um, you have someone who's in front of you who's causing a lot of problems. Well, basically, I'm gonna say, don't worry about that person because that person how you doing? Because that person is just a distraction on your journey, okay? That person is just a distraction on your journey and you cannot worry about anybody that is on the road, okay? If if you're on the road, on, on a journey to somewhere, and my 365 day journey is just that, hallelujah, glory be to God. My 365 day journey new life journey I cannot be distracted even by the people who are endangering my life even by the people who are sitting on the side of the road and they could help me let's say you have a breakdown right let's 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 say it's your car breakdown and people that you know love trust who are called to be there in your life instead of them helping you they're just looking at you and you know, you know, you're telling them what's wrong with your car, and they don't believe you, or um, they see they saw that someone hit you on the road, a hit and run, or whatever, or someone or someone sabotaged your car, and they still like they don't they don't care that that the person um, who's supposed to be your ally sabotaged your car. Um, I hate that people are using that word wrong these days, <laughs> but anyway. Um, the devil has perversed a lot of different things, okay, in this day and age, and it's, and it's very sad, it's a shame, um, because, um, <clears throat> but anyway, I'm not gonna get sidetracked, um, but that hurts you, but you know what I'm gonna do in the next year? I'm not gonna focus on those people, I'm not gonna talk directly to those people, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to engage with those people. I have a journey. I have to focus on what I need to do. So that's a big thing. Don't focus on the negativity that's going on in your life. Deal with the things that are negative in your life. Have a plan. Have a ferocity. A ferocity. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Have a ferocity um, against wage war against the things that are negative in your life that are holding you back you you are going to have to be the best you that you can be for yourself for your for your children for your family for everyone who is depending on you because i know what myself um God has a plan for me to help a lot of other people, but I can't get to that plan with myself in a very bad and dangerous situation myself, okay? Um, and so 
the main person is my son okay um there's a lot of things that i that i need to and want to um do for my son all right um i want to be a better father i need to be a better father okay over the next year okay um i i am a pretty great father um but you know what though i have some weak places you know um i have, I have some places that i can do a lot better um and that's the godly outlook that every father should have okay and um you might be a father or a mother and you might not have any holes in your game i don't know you know but i know that in my assessment and in my reality and the reality that i'm living in i know that i have to be a better father hallelujah glory be to god thank you jesus um and so first and foremost he is my number one customer my only customer um at this point in my life you know um he is my only stockholder thank you jesus he is um, um he is um the only one that i'm responsible for um and again when you read my book you're gonna understand more i'm i'm not gonna talk about anybody here i'm not i'm not gonna um go directly at anybody here because i'm focused on my 365 day new life challenge okay um i had uh, a conversation with, with one of the people who's really the main person the reason why i've been struggling so much um and i had a conversation with them yesterday about something and I didn't get mad. I didn't get angry, you know, with my analogy about being on the road and someone cutting you off and putting you in danger. I'm like, why did you do that? Why did you feel like you had the need to do that? Like for, you know, you just put me in danger. You know, I I should be really angry at you, um, but I'm not going to be angry because it's not going to help me. It's not going to help the situation, right? Um, you can get in a road rage, um, a road rage. Uh, situation someone pulls out a gun shoots you and kills you and that's it you know um, and so or you pull out a gun and shoot someone and kill someone or just or just shoot someone or whatever and and your life is going to be over basically you know in many different ways but anyway um, so and all you had to do you're gonna be sitting in jail or waking up in eternity and all you had to do was just hold your peace all you had to do is not to respond to what that person did to you and focus on you getting to your destination focus on you getting to your journey you know um and and you want to be top top of the mountain pray for that person and like i mean that's 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 the top of the mountain you can't get no higher on the mountain than that you know not responding to that person not getting angry not getting upset or if you do get triggered a little bit calming down praying for that person that's the top of the mountain right there y'all but what you need to be doing is focusing on getting out of that situation in my situation it feels like being on the road and like you have so many cars on your destination that instead of flowing with you and going in the same direction they're trying to box you in they're trying to get in your way they're trying to cause problems you know um they're looking into your car laughing at you you know talking dirt to you or whatever um and these are people that you not the people that you don't know but the people that you do know all right um the people who are who, who are supposed to be there to who have sworn to love you and to be there for you and support you the people and the institutions you know um and you know just read your bible if if you want to know well, what is he talking about just read your bible it's right there especially in the last days the bible says the people that your enemies will be the people of your own household okay um so um but what i have learned is that if you focus on your enemies then what's going to happen is you are not going to be the best you okay and i need to be the best me that's the answer to to your problems that person who swerved in front of you 
Thank you, Jesus. That person who swerved in front of you on the highway, who you almost got in an accident, you had to slam on the brakes or whatever, you or whatever you had to maneuver around that person, and by the grace of God, you survived that accident. That person is not your worst problem, actually. You, what you do to get out of that situation, to get to your destination safely, and not even on your own time. You might say, man, I got to my destination late. Well, that's according to your time. Thank you, Jesus. But by God's time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's more about how you get there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. You might have to get out of your car. And when you're dealing with, see, you might want to go up to those people. If, if you have a lot of people who just, we're, we're on a roadway. And everyone in front of you stops their cars. And you're like, what's, what's, what's going on? The light is green, but, but no one's going. And you're boxed in. You might want to get out of your car and be like, now, now this is this is just a analogy for life, all right? You, you might want to get out of your car and start talking to these people like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, the, the light is green, you know? I'm, I'm going to call the police. You call the police. And the police come out and they're like, so what's going on, sir? Well, these people aren't moving, officer. I have to go, you know? And the officer's like, nothing's wrong here. I'm like, what? Nothing's wrong here, sir. Get, I'll get back in your car. Um, and don't call us anymore. I'm talking about things that aren't true or things are that are not a problem, okay? We're gonna charge you next time. We're gonna fire you next time. I mean, and, you may be, and you may even go to jail. Like, what? Now, you might think that you're in a twilight zone. And that's how I feel a lot of times. Like, am I in a twilight zone or something? Like, what is going on? It's, it's really scary, man. And think about what Joseph felt when his family members, you know, turned, um, not just turned their back on him. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> his father brushed him off was angry at him for saying that, you know, he was going to be greater than him. His brothers almost killed them. They decided not one of them said, um, I believe it was, was one of them was like, no, nah, don't let's not kill him. Let's just sell him off to the to the Egyptians. Right. Let's get rid of our brother, our baby brother at that, you know. Um, and so they sold him off. He could have died. I mean, that was almost a death sentence come on man to, to your baby brother he, you're gonna sell him off as a slave to the egyptians come on man um and a digital servant a slave i don't know what they actually sold him as but you you're gonna do that to your baby brother come on man um so how do you think he felt how do you think he felt i'm just gonna use him as a biblical example i'm not gonna go any further than that you know he was you talk about boxed in and he has no one to call he can't call the police you know but it's almost like you know you're in a twilight zone this can't be happening i love my brothers and my family and my father just brushed me off you know my father who loves me he he brushed me off he didn't and i just had a dream i have somewhere to go i have somewhere to be i just have a dream but what did he do he had patience and he trusted God and he said, you know what? Um, I'm going to get to where I need to go now, man, that do you, do you know how much maturity and trust and faith in God that that takes to say, you know what? I got kidnapped. I'm not, not kidnapped. I got sold by my family over to a foreign nation. A heathen, fr uh, a, a foreign nation, and we're supposed to be the people. We we're supposed to be the people of God. And I got sold to a foreign nation. And what they told, and 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 I got thrown in jail. I got accused of doing something that I did not do. 
I was at the top of the mountain because um, I didn't have relations with that woman that who wanted to have relations with me. And she lied on me and said that I did something that I didn't do. Come on now. Um, I could have died in that situation, but I didn't. And, but what did he do? He did not focus on his enemies. He did not focus on his situation. He did not focus on the people that were around him that should have been loving him and protecting him and serving him and a part of his journey of success. Instead, they were a part of what looked so terrible in his life being a slave, being put in jail, being accused of something that of something hideous that he did not do. Um, all of these things and what did God do? God, because of his faith, because of his trust, because of his patience, because him, because of Joseph understanding that the creator of the universe, of, of, of the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creators of you and me, um, that creator, Glory be to God, Elohim, Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, hallelujah. Because El Shaddai, hallelujah. Because of the creator of the universe that I serve, the creator of the universe gave me this vision and this dream. It shall come to pass. I don't know how it's going to happen if I have to get out of my car because my car has is boxed in all around but with all of these these cars these of with these familiar people that you know should be helping me and loving me family members friends i'm not even gonna even go with the friends but some sometimes friends can 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 stab you in the back and things of that nature um but um i'm not gonna go there that's not i don't have i don't i don't really have a problem with my friends i you know i've i've had issues with friends and things of that nature I don't really have a whole problem with my friends, but with me, family members and institutions, that's what I'm going to talk about a whole bunch in the book. Family members and institutions got you boxed in. And it's like, I can't move. I, you mean to tell me I have to walk to my destination? Get out of your car and walk to your destination. Head toward your destination. You might have to call an Uber. Now, these days you can call an Uber, right? God has different ways of getting you to your to your destination. You're going to get to your destination, but you cannot focus on your enemies. Don't go up to these people. This is what there's this uh, there's this channel on YouTube that I enjoy. When I first was um, confronted with these problems, these major problems in my life. Um, that again, some people don't make it out of these problems. Um, they're on the news with the people who they're having a problem with, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, they're going to be put on the news. Um, they might not see another day. Um, the people around them might not see another day um, because they dealt with the problem the wrong way. And I have sympathy, sympathy for those people because when you're dealing with domestic issues, they're the most dangerous issues because they're, they're the people who are most close to you. Um, there's so many e emotions that that are that, that are built up and that are stirred up, and um, so I have sympathy and empathy for those people, not to condone what what they have done or what they do. Um, but I'm trying to help people not to be in that. I'm trying to help you not to be on the news, not to be in that situation, not to be not not to send someone to eternity or to go to to eternity yourself because of these types of interactions um, that are sometimes you can't predict them happening you can't predict that I'm gonna you know have a run-in with someone really close to me who you care about and love and trust it and you know have a very important role and position in your life and they're blocking you in or they hurt you or they did or they did something to you um, but let me tell you that just like with that person that I was talking to you about that yesterday, I had a um incident with them and in times past I would have went off on them. I would have been so angry, upset, and I said, you know what? No. I'm not even gonna go there. I'm not even gonna go there. And I'm not 
I, I didn't get angry probably about I didn't even further I didn't go into further questioning with that person I didn't try to frame things so that they can understand better like what they actually did because because that's what we do you did what you didn't do something or X X Y and Z but you understand exactly what you did and this is why you shouldn't do it in the future don't even go there anymore don't even go there anymore going back to the YouTube channel um, this guy teaches about narcissism and how don't he says don't go to the narcissist and accuse them don't take your evidence to the narcissist you're wasting your time and all you're gonna do is create a bigger situation with the narcissist okay so this is what I say again I'm not saying that the people in your life that you should not confront them that you should not um, deal with them directly um, but when someone when you're on your road to your 365 day new life when you're on trying to trying to get out of a hole in life and have a new life and have a better and have a better life and survive and people are boxing you in let me say this and you know these people and you have dealt with these people before and you never got anywhere with these people why would you go to them why would you get out of your car and say why are you boxing me in for you already know why they're boxing you in okay you already know that these people aren't for you you already know that these people don't like you you already know that these people don't love you you already know that these people aren't going to help you so why would you even waste your time getting out of your car to confront them um to risk you popping off or them popping off or something bad happening you know and then you try to call the police and the police are looking at you like you're crazy or something like that you know what i'm saying um so don't even bother with any of it don't bother with any of it um don't worry about any of it um don't be concerned with any of it um because you are better off dealing with the situation yourself working on yourself you are better off um God is going to show you what you need to do to he's showing me what I need to do to get a place to have a home for my son to have a better life for my son to get out of financial desperation um, fin financial jeopardy I have a lot of good things going for myself um, um, to build my business um, that's been really hard too um, to find people to work with but you know what I said to myself and I, and I saw this a long the God showed me this a long time ago. I'm going to have to disregard everyone else, the people who you're, you know, talking to and, you know, and you're trying to work with them in business and things of that nature. And they don't want to work with you in business or they don't want to help you or they don't want to do you're their boss and they don't want to do what you tell them to do um, or whatever it is, you know. Sometimes you have to become successful first, just like Joseph did, right? First time you have to become successful, then people will respect you. Then people will, oh yeah, I want to work with you now. Joseph became, see, Joseph could not tell his family his dream. Joseph could not tell his own father his dream. Joseph had to become successful first. And once Joseph was successful and people actually needed him, that's when they came to him, okay? That's when they came to him. And <clears throat> um, so sometimes you have to become successful first, then people will look at you differently, right? And they might even need you, okay? So that's what God showed me that I'm gonna have to do in my life. You can have to become successful first. Then people are like, oh, why didn't I recognize that guy before? Why didn't I see his gifts? Why didn't I see his or her gifts? How, why didn't I work with that person before? I could have worked with that person instead. I'm putting this person down. I'm talking about this person or whatever it may be, you know. And so, um, you know, that's the road that I'm going to take in my life, you know. Um, that's the road that God has showed me that I'm going to have to take. And... 
as a poor person like myself who is a person that hey brother. how you doing I hate to bother you. sure um we're not from here we're from mississippi sure. just visiting yeah. and um do they have sunday school in this, this do you know what no the sunday school if you uh the first door you're going to come to that's in the front of the church uh-huh. by, by the road that's the door where Go to the front office actually because okay. I don't think that door is open. Okay, because so, they lock it. Cause yes, okay. yes, but um, you're gonna go up to the second floor. Okay, have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, good day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, so what's gonna happen is you know, um, so that's what God showed me that I'm gonna have to do, you know, um. <clears throat> That's what God is, you know, showed me that I'm going to have to do, you know, and, um, yeah, so, so, so basically, yeah, I'm sorry, but I lost my point. Now I was going to make a really good point, but I don't, I don't mind it though. <clears throat> but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. Excuse me. <clears throat> so, yeah, y'all, so, um, so so joseph so yeah man you know ladies and gentlemen like that's that's what happens is why would you go out and try to work with these people who don't want to work they don't want to work with you they don't want to help you they don't want to you know deal with you no it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. I have like three or four more minutes left on, on this video because my um, memory is running out. <clears throat> but it's going to be tough for you. Jesus, thank you, Lord. It's going to be tough for you to get out of that hole, y'all. But you're going to have to stop worrying about the people who are right in front of you. Who are stopping you from getting to where you need to go. Who are hurting you. Who are enraging you. Who are... Oh yeah, that was where I was, I was, I was going to get to. The kind of person that I am, just like Joseph. He was so excited to tell the people around him his dream. His brothers. His father. The people who meant the most to him. He probably thought that they were going to help him with the dream. Wow, I had this I have this vision, I had this dream and it's like, wow, yeah. This is so awesome. And he knew that it was from God. And he Thank you Jesus. He had no idea that his brothers and his father, his own father, would treat him like that. His father's a good man, Jacob. Hallelujah. I mean, he didn't do anything terrible or wrong or anything. He, he didn't sin. It was just that if he had it to do it over again, he would have reacted a whole different way. But his father had his own things going on. Okay. He's not a perfect man. Hallelujah. And I was just saying that as a father, we all probably need to do better okay and so god you're so good thank you jesus and so i, I mean this whole conversation a lot of it is spontaneous i had a couple things in my mind to say but a lot of it's spontaneous i believe the holy spirit is directing this conversation but i have about a minute to go y'all so let me close it out a person like myself i want to work with everybody like oh you are a part of this institution Okay, now, I'm not going to say any names. Oh, you are this person, this role in my life? Oh, man, God gave me you and all these different things. And, you know, and I want to work with you. I want to share my dreams with you. And you can't share your vision and your dreams with everybody because they're going to try to railroad you. I think that's what Joseph really, really teaches us. But the main thing that Joseph teaches us is that when you're shocked by the position that you're in in your life when you are in a place in your life that you never thought you would be trust God be patient serve God to the fullest 
love God. Pray for those people. Love those people. Joseph could not have done what he did if he was sitting in jail thinking about what his brother did to him, thinking about what his father didn't do, thinking about what his father did do wrong, thinking about all of the hurt, all of the pain, the people who came into his life and lied on him, accused him, almost got him killed. If he would have focused on those things and tried to fight back, today they're saying, well, they're raising up the black fists and all, raising up the fists and all this other kind of stuff. They want to fight back against the system and tear down the system and stuff like that. They will get nowhere. The people who submit themselves to God, the people who pray for their enemies, the people who are patient and have grace and mercy toward others, they will inherit the kingdom. They will be blessed. They will make it through. 365 